Hi, today we'll continue working on this uh, Atari 800 XL. Uh, if you remember, in previous video we've replaced PIA chip, which was faulty. Uh, today we'll be installing Ultimate 1 MB, so one of these. Um, if you buy Ultimate 1 MB, you'll get uh, one of these ribbon cables, um, this ribbon cable, you'll also get this wires, which you may use or may not, depending on, on uh, what you want. And I think you'll be getting these pylons or standoffs. Uh, I'm not sure about this, maybe these are mine, I don't know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all you'll be getting. So I'll put this my box aside. So, um, Ultimate one megabyte, as I said, is a must-have for for the um, 8-bit Atari. So it is fairly simple to install. Um, first thing that you need to think about is where you put it. So I saw people putting it right here, uh, removing this um, RF modulator. Um, you can put it anywhere you want, or anywhere you, yeah, anywhere you want. I um, when I install this, I usually install those here, so in this position. So I drill a hole right here, and then another hole right here. This is safe because if you look, not sure, yeah, you probably can't see. There's absolutely nothing on the other side of this, in this here. You need to be careful not to um, damage these, um, but traces. But apart from that, it's again, it's fairly easy. Just drill two holes. Um, and that's that's it. Um, then you'll need to remove MMU and OS ROM and probably BASIC. You you don't need BASIC here. Um, as far as I remember, you don't need BASIC uh, because this will replace pretty much anything. And then use use this just to to uh, plug it in here, and then the other the other side to the MMU and to those headers. Um, the only not tricky, but the only soldering you need to do is these four wires. And you need four points. You need... Um, oh, let me show you. So when you when you look at this... Um, I bought it uh, in uh, at Lotarix, sorry, at Lotarix, um shop. These are very high quality and uh, as you can see there... I'll put the link in, in the description there. But the, the, the manual just tells you to um, use, to solder the, these wires, this here. So one end goes onto this header, right here, let me, yeah, this four pin header, there's like two pin, four pin, and what is it, five, six pin, don't, don't know, five. So this middle one here, so we stick this, plug it in here. And then what you need to wire this this end to four points. Uh, and again, uh, on the kind of original manual, it, it tells you to solder it to CPU pins directly, which I really don't like doing. So um, yeah, you can do that. But first of all, these are on this motherboard. These are socketed, so you, I would probably have to come out yeah from from the other side. Which yeah, I'm I'm not doing this. Uh, what I do, what I tend to do, I use alternative points. So, uh, HALT, H-L-T signal, is right here. And just just as an overview, so this is the ANTIC chip. So right above ANTIC chip, this pin here, right there. I'll, I'll show you the diagram in a minute. So this is HALT. RESET is right here, as far as I remember. Yeah, that's RESET. Uh, RST. Then... RW is right here, so next to OS ROM, right here, and then um, PHI2, I think it's it's clock, one of the clocks signal, is right here. So I use those points, so let me share this, so I'll, I'll share that, so you clearly can see uh, when you have that it's fairly high resolution, so you'll be able to identify those points. I'll share that uh, image in the description or that that photo. Um, but before before you do anything, I really usually recommend just grabbing 
uh, multimeter. I'll put it here so that you can hopefully see. So, uh, so this is the uh, CPU. So CPU pin number forty is um, uh, what is it? I think it's reset. So this pin here, pin forty, is reset. So again, as I said, reset is here. And you see. There. Then um, 39 is that clock signal, but that clock signal goes actually right here to one of these, I think. Yeah, here, to one of these chips, and then to that pin here, and from there it goes to Antic. Antic is right here and is, I think, 29. Which one was it? Which should be... Yeah, this is Antic. Um, let me have a quick look. No, sorry, so it, it goes there and then uh, from from this one it goes... Let me just check. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Which one is it? Oh, there. So again, this chip here, pin seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Pin eleven, and then from there, you will get it here, right there, in this point. And it's, I think, uh, on on the on the PBI connector is number ten. Or if 10 from this side, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. So again, these are the points. Um, so before you do anything, before you start soldering, maybe just, you know, look at the picture, at the photo that, I, that I'll share and just uh, check. Oh, uh, by the way, then um, next one is what, 36, and it should be... 36, it should be RW, I think, so, this one, 36, there, yep, so RW, and then HALT is, I think, this one, and I have HALT right here, there, so right above Antic. So, again, my suggestion before you start doing anything. I think all revisions, uh, 800 Excel revisions, have exact same points. But uh, yeah, just to be on the safe side, just go and check. So we'll be soldering this to those to those point that I, points that I showed you. Um, I think I'll reuse this. I normally use one of those um, like IDE or these kind of ribbons. And they look nice, but there's nothing wrong with this. I, I'll, I'll think I'll try to use this one. Let me just quickly check if I can get... So reset is this pin here, which is there. I'm sorry, to, I need to reach this point here. This one's reset. Or halt. Sorry, halt, not reset. So it will reach there. So it should be fine. It should be fine. If not, I'll uh, just make something else. Uh, also, in this position, um, I will need to modify these ribbon cables uh, because they are just too long. I think they are. They were meant to go from here to to here. Yeah, but again, on the other hand, I don't know how they would. They wouldn't probably reach because you need to make sure it go uh, around this. Anyway, um, first things first, let's drill the holes. So I'll, I'll um, how I do that is I have um, kind of plastic um, template. Uh, so just a piece of plastic, just mark these two holes so I can, because this is not easy to, you can't really, you know, put it here. Um, so I'll just use thin kind of plastic. So I'll drill these holes and I'll show you how, how it looks. And then we mount this and, um, make these cables or, or modify these cables and then solder these 
these points there. Another modification that I'll be doing today is I will be um, adding chroma to to the uh, video port and uh, if you can see this, this pin is not connected to anything and this is actually chroma and we'll take chroma from, from this point here we'll need to add 100k resistor, solder here and then just wire it to, to there and you'll have S-Video on 800XL at least PAL, I'm not sure about NTSC I've actually never worked on NTSC 800XL um, in PAL region Okay, so I'll go ahead and drill these this, this holes and we'll continue from there. Okay, so we have the holes drilled. So one is right here, the other is right here. By the way, I'm using, when I said I'm using a piece of plastic, it's just this thing. So you can essentially put it right here and just mark where you want the holes to be and you should be good. And as you can see, there's pretty good space there so you don't damage anything and yet on the other side as I said there's absolutely nothing on the other side so then how you mount it you just take these standoffs uh, this probably this um, um, screws are probably too long so I'll use something shorter and uh, these standoffs should be okay I think so what we'll do is just put one through here. I'll just use them temporarily uh, when I do a final install. I'll use shorter uh, screws there. So we do that. You probably need washers on the other side when you, when uh, when you're uh, kind of assembling it. And then let's temporarily put it right here because we need to measure the cable lengths and all that. So as you can see, it sits. The, oh, it's. Uh, yeah, these, these standoffs are a little bit too high. I have shorter ones, I'll bring them in a minute. So that's what, what you do, essentially. And then you screw this in. So we'll put it in for a second. Just roughly, should be enough. So now, the... Um, the um, what we need to do is we need to make this shorter. You can use those original lengths, but um, they are way too long for for this. So what do you what we will do is um, I'll kind of make them shorter. And uh, let me let me show you how I do that. So um, this one, the one that goes to the MMU, should be well. It's designed to go this way. So we'll be removing MMU chip. And we'll put stick this uh, connector there, but for me this doesn't work. Um, it's uh, cumbersome. So what I'll, I want to do, I want this to go like that. And in order for this to go like that, I will need to when I'm when I'm putting new one, it will have to be on the other side. So so um, right now, as you can see, the the connector is these are the pins, and this is where the the uh, connector plugs in. So for us, this will have to be on the... like that. I'll show you in a minute. So what I do, I replace this. You can you can um, cut this side off and then uh, put new... these ones. Um, I prefer doing this. This is slightly easier for me, so just we'll cut this one off. And uh, then we'll measure. So I'll stick this one in. Now let's think how it would go. So this one would go right there, like that, and then something like this is the always the tricky part. Maybe nope, not like that. Um, something like this, I'd say. There may be more. Um, okay, so it took a few tries, but uh, so like that. So bend it here so that it goes underneath the, the board, and then do one more <laughs> kind of bend, and it should sit something like this. So 
I will need to... I need a pen. So I will need the connector. So you can leave a little bit of slack just in case. I will need the connector to be somewhere around around here. Just like that. So this one's kind of done. Now for this one what we'll need I'll just take that off. For this one, it'll go from here. And by the way, I'll, I'll probably need to remove this um, um, strain relief bracket because it'll be just sit too high, and I think the keyboard will not fit properly. So it'll go from there. And that's going to be tricky again. Let me just... Um, I don't know how to do it. I should have a template, really, and I'll probably do that. So length, exact length. So this goes like that. And then we'll need this to... Again, when we remove this, this strain relief... Actually, let's do it now. Okay, so strain relief has been removed. You need to be careful now when you're uh, taking this out, but there's no problem there. So if we put it right here, that goes that way. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, essentially you just do this, and then it'll go underneath, and it'll go to the OS ROM, which means it's probably somewhere around, around here. Let me try that again. Plug it in. So, like that. I'll put it in for a second there. Like that. Underneath. There, and it should reach exactly this point where the OS ROM is, so let's mark right here. So let's confirm it's right here. So that's where I need to cut that. So let me remove that again. Now with this one again, be careful because Without strain relief, you can uh, damage it. Okay, so I'll cut this one right here. Just make sure you're cutting kind of square, so or as square as possible. So I'll cut this one right here. This one's done. This one this one's done. So now uh, I'll try to recover this. I'm not sure if it's um, if it'll work. So these two. But if it won't then I have spares essentially. So these are not cheap but yeah, they work. Okay, so I managed to remove this, um, to save this connector. Uh, it has all these uh, plastic tabs in place. So now you just um, take this cable there, this wire, again, this side up. Put this up. By the way, just when you are removing this, make sure this, this, uh, these pins right here are kind of intact. They are not bent or anything like that. So I just put it right here, then pin 1 is right here on this side. 
So just put it back on there. Oops. Not like that. So again, there. We'll click, then move it back. Yeah, that should be enough, I think. So now what I do, I take one of these and put it right there. Just uh, I use vice, which I have in my workshop, so I won't be showing it here and just squeeze it and that will do it. I'll be done. So I'll do this one. I'll do um, this one as well. So how I let me show you how I try to remove that. This is not always this not always works, but most of the time it does. So first of all, just push a screwdriver so that this side. Hopefully you can see that. So you see these tabs here. These two tabs. They actually. Um, they kind of. Um, yeah, they work that this that they go against this. Not sure how to say that, but you can lift that up to this position. I do the same on the other side. So I go from inside there, up and up. Sorry, I'll be back. Sorry, postman. So uh, again, both sides lifted. As you can see, that this this uh, plastic tabs. Uh, won't allow it to go any any further. So what I usually do, I just try and kind of I'm putting pressure so that I try to open this and then kind of slightly lift those up like that, and the other one, and it should eventually kind of release. There, one side is done, the other side will just slide out. So there you go. So that's that's how I do this. And again, I'll uh, same thing, exact same thing with this one. So just remove this cable there. Just uh, don't rush it because you can bend this this these pins here. Just uh, slowly. And there you go. So again, just make sure the pins here are okay. This can be bent slightly, you can you can straighten them out, but just make sure you do this. So I'll go ahead and, and prepare those two cables uh, and I'll be back. Okay, so um, as you can see, the cables are done. I just put this in uh, just to test it. So I use this standoff. This is fairly short. Um, I don't have anything to measure, but... <laughs> but And have a kind of the idea. It's roughly half of less than half of the width of this uh, ribbon cable. Anyway, so I'll just put it to check if it clears the uh, the socket, and it does. It fits like perfectly. As you can see, there's maybe one millimeter, maybe two. So this, these are perfectly fine, so I'll use those. But I won't be screwing in this yet, because we need to take care about these four signals that we need. So that's what I'm going to do next, but um, I'll probably do that under the microscope, um, because that's where my soldering station is. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, again, what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, Put this back on temporarily and stick it in. So just make sure you put it um, well, whatever way you want. But I'll put it this way so yellow will be halt signal. So let me see if that will. There will be that ribbon cable there. So yellow goes. Hmm. signal is right right here so this actually might be a little bit too short unless I route it some other way no 
or I stick it here, that should work. Right there. Yeah, so it will fit. It will actually it will reach this uh, halt signal. Yeah, that's too short, so I'll do it like that. It'll be okay. It's going to reach. Yeah. And again, halt signal is right here. So it'll do. And then I'll just quickly measure the length. So uh, this one was reset, and according to the diagram, reset is this one. So reset will go there, so I'll cut it there. Then the um, PHI is somewhere here, so very short, and the um, RW is, is again underneath here, so it will be very short. So yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll cut these two sides and we'll do, um, I'll, I'll solder them on uh, under the microscope and we'll come back and test it. Okay, so as you can see, um, <laughs> the microscope is uh, an overkill for this job because these points are really uh, huge compared to modern uh, motherboards. Uh, but let's let's do that. Um, again, I don't have my um, camera set up where I have the all my soldering stuff. So um, first things first, I won't be using this. It was a little bit too short uh, to my liking, so I thought uh, if I'm doing this, let's do it right. So I just made myself this. This is the IDE, kind of old IDE cable. I kind of pre-cut it to correct uh, length. So um, now what we need to do now is um, first of all make sure these holes or the the um, vias that we'll be using are empty. In some boards that I've seen later mod later um, revisions, they are actually empty. In this, these are all filled with uh, with solder. So we need to remove that solder first, and let's start with um, HLT or HALT. So this is Antic, and um, our HALT, let me grab some tweezers maybe. Our HALT signal is right, let me just move it. So again, this here is Antic, and our HALT signal is right here, this one. So let's add some little bit of flux not too much, and I'll add some fresh solder to that point. So, so that it's easier to um, remove. And then, just a little bit of wick, and it's still not coming out. Yeah, let's add more solder then. Uh, I will need film extractor first. This tip might be too small, but let's try maybe heat it up. And let's remove that now. Okay, I'll change the tip. So this tip should take care of it. Okay, let's try it now. If not, we'll try it from the other side. But hopefully this one will do. Still solder there. So we'll do it from the other side. Let's focus on, on the other points. So this was HLT. Next one will be reset. And reset is... Let me just make some room. This is a rather big board. So, reset is right here. So, this is reset right here, next to R80. This one. So, let's do the same thing. A little bit of flux. Then, fresh solder. Just like that, and 
I mean with the with the wick. Let's see if this will work. Yeah, I'll take I'll do that from the other side as well, I think. Not sure why. But it's not working from this side. Oh yeah, this one worked. This is empty. Maybe this one is empty as well. No. The other one. Oh yeah, this one is also empty. It was just flux, I think. So let's go there. There. Done. So we have halt, we have reset, now we need RW. And RW is right here this one right there and I'm not going to remove I'll just move the board so that it's easier for me just like that so again it's this point right here that's RW Flux, fresh solder, and we'll wick the whole thing. This one is definitely not empty, I think. Yeah, so let's try it again. So hopefully it will come off now. Okay, I'll do it from the other side then. And the last one, which is uh, PHI2, which is this one right here. So let's try it from this side first. And we'll flip to the other side of the board then. Like that. And just cut the, the wick. I think this one's clear. It is. So let's flip to the other side of the board and find this RW. And it's this one right here. So let's repeat the exercise from this side here. Hopefully, we'll have a nice clean hole there. This time. Yeah. So that's done. Now let's just make sure that <laughs> this is the right hole. Right, right via. Um, where are we? Right here. Yeah, they are actually both empty at this point, but the one that we want is this one there. Okay, so I'll clean this off and we'll solder the wires. Okay, so now that's done, let's um, solder this um, that connector there. So what I'll do 
I'll put this I'll put this um, wires in their respective PS so this will be our halt signal which goes right here and I'll secure it with blue tack whatever you have should work so a little bit of blue tack right here so this is fairly secure next one will be reset which is right here again the microscope makes it actually a little bit harder to work with but so reset is right here I'll stick it in there I need some blue tack first so that goes there just like that, that should work now next one is RW which in our case is oh, let me move that it's right here so I'll stick it in there and again blue tack and the last one, final one which is PHI2 let me just move to that spot right here so put it there this is actually a very short wire so I'll stick it in there and again A little bit of blue tack should hold it in place just like that so we flip to the other side and just solder this and we'll be done so where are we we'll start with halt signal which is right here and just adjust so this is where the wire is sticking out so let's just solder it before it falls off just like that, that's done so reset where's reset? reset is right here So right here, so again, I'll just solder it in, just like that. Next one, next one is RW, and it's the one, where is it, right here. So. I have to adjust the um, microscope every time because it's not even, the board is not even on the other side, so um, yeah. So, right here, and I'll fill this so that it looks original. Okay, so last one that we have is the PHI signal, and it's very close right here that's the last one done so all that's left is to clean this which I'll do now okay so that's done uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, well I'll remove that blue tag obviously and I'll switch back I'll go back to my, my main camera because again you won't see much in this setup 
so that's again that that's that's done on uh, with the soldering it's all done so I'll be back in a few minutes okay so the board is back this is what it looks like so these were again the points that we've used this is halt right here and uh, this is reset this is RW and this is PHI2 and um, so by the way I forgot to record doing the S video mode mode so let me see so this is where I solder these two pins are actually connected by design so whenever you want just just to solder a hundred ohm resistor to any of these and then with a wire that's just a heat shrink tube to this pin of that um, video connector right there and that's that's all essentially when it comes to as video mode, mode. so uh, all that's left is to put these screws in right there where's the other one there and again I know people will be complaining that this is uh, destructive like drilling holes and all that and people are where's my where's my Ultimate One Meg. There it is. So again, people um, are doing it right here. This is not a bad place, but again, you'll still need to drill a hole or just use one uh, standoff, which I wouldn't recommend. Um, but yeah, you can do it here. But from this, uh, you, you see, these cables would have to be really, really long. And that's not probably not a good idea. Um, you know, every single wire has some capacitance. The longer it is, the more capacitance to it. So yeah, these signals. I know these are not gigahertz and all that, but still, yeah. Some people put it here again, quite a long way there. I think this is pretty good place. And by the way, uh, th this um, location is actually. Um, I think I saw it first in uh, one of the um, Flash Just Cat videos. So, um, yeah, if you don't know uh, <laughs> Flash Just Cat, is the guy who did uh, firmware for this, firmware for Site 2, Site 3. He's done amazing work, some amazing work for, for 8 bit Ataris. So, I highly recommend I'll put a link to his site and his YouTube channel down there in the description. Have a look. Honestly, great guy, and uh, and yeah, he's. Uh, well, I I think he was the first that uh, kind of came out with this um, location for for the ultimate one megabyte. And I think and I fully agree with him. This is probably the best uh, location for for this mod. So again, let's put these standoffs there. That goes right here. I'll screw it in. I'll just leave it like that for now uh, because I'm not sure if I, I probably will need um, to shorten this. Let me zoom in a little bit. There, hopefully that'll be better. So um, let's connect this guy. So we, I need to make sure this was the red one was halt, I think, and it's on the bottom there. So I'll connect it right here. Like that, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's still there's um, like clearance there, so uh, I think this will work. So that one there, as you can see, it works pretty well. Then we'll put this cable in there, just like that, 
And again, I removed this um, strain relief from, from this side. I'm not sure if I need to do it on this side. Let's, uh, we'll see. Well, if I need to, I'll remove that. And that goes this way. Again, if you're worried about this um, hole right here, uh, then you probably can live with just this one. But yeah, it will kind of move and yeah, will loosen probably over time. So again, I would recommend doing this. Um, this needs to go something like... How was it? I can't remember. Like that. There. So I'll have a look if I have straight but the pins are. Okay, and they are. So let's just plug it in there. I think it's 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 there nicely. So something like this should work. I will probably have to remove this because I don't think the keyboard will sit there. But anyway, uh, let's leave it for now. So the test. Let's try and connect it. You can see if it works. Okay, so I connected uh, everything to this. Let me just bring the Output there, so let's power it on. Again, you can't hear, but it but uh, it works. I, I can hear. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Ultimate. It should go to setup. I think this is the the um, original original um, firmware. So let me connect the keyboard because I'll need keyboard to um, to um, make it work. Okay, so I've got the keyboard there. Don't want to. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just keep it, and I'll press. I'll turn it on. I'll press. I think it's help. Help reset should go. There you go. So we have uh, ultimate one megabyte. Uh, let's first of all what I'll do. How do you stock config system stock XL disable Sparta? So essentially, let's disable everything, and we'll do um, we'll connect the syscheck again, just to do all the tests. Because now that I have the keyboard, I can do that. So side hardware disabled, basic, and that's all. So let's save that. I'll power it off, and I'll connect the... Um, this is going to be tricky now. I'll connect syscheck. Okay, so I have syscheck connected. I'm not sure if you can see this right there. Uh, 5 volts, obviously, to the second controller port pin 7, I think it is. So, let's bring that window output and Power it on. So again, it will go through through the test. It's just to confirm that um, kind of stock configuration works because the ultimate clearly works. So that's that's okay. Let's press start as it says, and everything is okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll power it off again. I'll remove the keyboard again because this is not very. Uh, actually, let me remove the five volts first. And I'll remove the keyboard. There. 
So, remove syscheck. Again, I highly recommend this device. It can do a lot more than the syscheck, as a syscheck or, or checking the system. As I mentioned, depending on these switches, you can have a memory upgrade, you can change the OS, anything you want, essentially. So, just to summarize what we did here, So again, just to summarize, we've installed the um, um, Ultimate One Megabyte. So you just need to remove. Um, oh, by the way, first we've obviously changed the PIA chip because the original was faulty. So remove MMU, remove Basic and OS ROM. I think Basic and leave Basic in place, just OS ROM, um, and just four wires. And that's all, and you're done. And again, I consider this Ultimate One Mac to be essential upgrade. To if you have 8-bit Atari, this is essential upgrade. I would say. Um, yeah. So that that's done. Oh, by the way, <laughs> also and I again forgot. This is the S video or Chroma, I believe it's Chroma. Yeah. So from here to here with 100 ohm resistor. And I'll uh, and again this these points these ultimate one mag points that I'm using I'll put it in the in the description that photograph again that photo was from my one of my first um, 800 excels and it was later revision where these holes were kind of empty in this one as you can see this is kind of early revision because everything is socketed here which by the way made this upgrade a lot easier because I didn't have to um, remove MMU or the solder MMU and the and the OS. So normally if, if these chips are so not socketed, if they are soldered directly to the board, you will have to disorder them. It, three options. One, um, just use the, the um, uh, what's it called? The solder sucker, the, the gun. Um, the other, use Lommel solder. Have a look at my videos. I've used Lommel solder on one of uh, Game & Watch, I think, videos. It, it's also an option, so you can go and uh, just add Lommel solder to to all the pins, and it will just fall off. You can easily remove that. Again, it, it's uh, it'll be a mess. You'll have quite a lot of work uh, removing the that that remains of that Lommel solder because you have to remove it before you solder socket. But it will do. It will work. Uh, the other option is just uh, um, it's just a hotter station. Just um, heat it up and it will just fall off. But yeah, there's a few options at least. It makes the job slightly more complicated, but it's doable. In this case, obviously, it was a lot easier. So yeah, um, obviously, again, <laughs> once you have this, I think the obvious step is to upgrade the um, the firmware to Flash Cut's firmware, uh, or buy, preferably, buy the Ultimate with Flash Cut firmware slightly um, more expensive, just uh, slightly more expensive. You'll have the firmware already on there and you, you will support the guy, Flash Scott, Jonathan, he's a really great guy. And yeah, have a look at his videos. I'll again, I'll post the um, his channel down there. So I think that's, that's done. All that's left is just to um, reassemble the device and clean the keyboard because again, the keyboard wasn't really um, well, it was kind of sticky, so I'll clean the keyboard, but that would be too long to, to do it on the video. So that's all for today. Um, thanks again. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. And thank you.